I'm going to give an overview of the linear algebra class and try to give us an idea of what to expect over this upcoming semester. So I'm going to basically give a, a broad introduction into the topic of linear algebra, talk a little bit about systems, talk about different ways to represent a vector, talk about notation, I'm going to talk about some of the topics that we're going to see and then finally do an example from statics. So one question that comes up is why are we bothering with linear algebra? And linear algebra is a, a topic that is used in almost every science and technology field. Um, and it's, what has happened is that different people from all kinds of uh, disciplines have come to the same ideas from these different directions. And the uh, downside is, is that uh, they brought different kind of notations or different ways to describe things, which can be very confusing. But it kind of signifies the importance of this topic that so many different people have come to the same ideas starting from different places. And what has happened is that it, there's been a collection of very useful tools that have been assembled. And uh, oftentimes people take a problem that is not a linear algebra problem and go to great pains to turn it into a linear algebra problem. The reason being is that all these ideas and all these tools from linear algebra make it a very powerful way to solve problems. And what's important for us to do is, is take a uh, transition or uh, look at things differently. We need to think about the world in terms of collections of things and how they interact. And we call those collections of things systems. Uh, in terms of this particular class, one of the central ideas is, is relating multiple things through linear relationships. And that leads to systems. So we need to think about big picture things and ask what are happening with all these collections of things and how they interact. And we're going to talk a lot about transformation. And when we talk about transformation, we're going to talk about how do we characterize the transformation? How do we represent it? Uh, how do we do calculations that will help us work with these transformations? Uh, it's going to turn out there's different ways to uh, express and uh, talk about a, a transformation. We have to figure out which way to do that. And another thing that's going to happen towards the end is we're going to take these transformations and we're going to break them into different pieces and talk about it as a collection of things. And that idea is called decomposition. And so it's important to keep in mind that systems are everywhere. So examples are is when you have multiple objects with different forces acting on them and interacting. Uh, circuits uh, represent systems because there's different parts of the circuit and the different parts interact. Uh, chemical reactions, you have multiple chemicals that are reacting in different ways to each other. Um, in biology, in, or in particular ecology, uh, you can talk about how different species interact with one another and those can, things that can happen there involve competition, cooperation, predator-prey relationships, and all kinds of different things. And basically there's no end to the ways we can describe systems. Basically, anytime you have more than two things interacting, you have a system. Now, one downside is that there's multiple ways that people use for notation to talk about things. So, as an example, uh, vectors are used in almost every field. Uh, so, you might hear an engineer talk about a vector as being something that has a magnitude and a direction. So, one way to do that is to talk about what is the force acting on it and what angle. So this may be some vector and that angle that that vector forms from the horizontal is given by uh, say 53.1 uh, degrees. You, oftentimes you'll hear scientists or in, particularly physicists talk about components. So we can talk about 3i plus 4j as you go 3 units in the i direction four units in the j direction, and the resultant is what happens when you do that the three in the i direction and four in the j direction. Right? And notice this is a three, four, five triangle. This is essentially the exact same thing as what the engineer might say if they talk about five newtons at a given angle. Right? So in this case, this angle here is the 53.1. Uh, in math, we uh, try to simplify this and make the notation a little more compact, which can be more confusing but more convenient. So we're going to talk about things in terms of row vectors. So you'll hear me talk about row 
versus column vectors. And this is an example of a column vector. So we basically we stack those numbers up. So instead of saying 3i plus 4j, that first component is there, and the second component is there. And we're going to write that as a column. And sometimes we'll write it as a row, depending on what is most convenient at the time. Now, in oftentimes in books, you'll see a vector uh, represented in terms of a boldface font, which can be really confusing and hard to keep track of. When we write on the page, we'll often do things like this, using a, give it a hat that looks like a, uh, a vector, a little pointy thing. Uh, sometimes we're going to use this, and this is a special notation for vectors that have to have um, a length of one. So we'll see this kind of notation as well, as well as other notations. So again, because of the uh, different origins of these different ideas, it's going to be very important for us to be very flexible in how we react to these things. Okay, so in terms of what we're going to see over this course of the semester, um, we're going to see things like matrices. We talk about how to represent a matrix. We're going to do different ways to do that. We're going to do operations with these matrices and things like multiplication and addition. But then we're going to do operations within the uh, matrix, in particular literal operations. Division is not defined. So we're going to talk about, instead of division, we're going to be talking about multiplying by an inverse. We mentioned decomposition. It's this idea we're going to break down multiplication of a matrix into a separate step. There's going to be a bunch of other things that we're going to do. Uh, and these are mostly talking about things that involve computation. But there's some big ideas that are underlying these computations and why we do these computations. In particular, we're going to talk about sums of vectors, general sums. And another way to talk about a general sum is this idea of a linear combination. Um, we're going to define multiplication of matrices and vectors. We're going to talk about how we can think about that kind of computation as being a linear transformation. It's going to lead to ideas of uh, how do we uh, look at the columns of a matrix. We'll talk about that later. And we're going to talk about um, how do the vectors in a collection depend on one another, or do they even depend on one another. And there's going to be a whole bunch of other different ideas we're going to talk about. But these are some of the kind of the big ideas. So I'm going to look at an example from statics. So basically in statics, what happens is nothing moves. So if th and that's the case, all your forces balance. So in particular, we can think of the forces up and down, right, in this direction, add to zero, and the forces left and right, so left and right, those are all going to add to zero. And a uh, quick example, we're going to talk about a box. The box is held up in the air by two ropes, and the rope on the left is going to have some angle with the horizon. We'll call that phi, so that's something given to us. And the other one's going to have some angle theta, and that's going to be given to us. So the question is, is given the mass of the box, given these angles, how do we figure out what are the tensions in the rope? So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about how do we transform this and think about this in a different way. So we're going to have some kind of idealization. So we're going to have some box, and we're going to have these ropes hanging down, and these are going to be at some angle. So this angle is theta, and this angle is phi, and this is going to be some force in this rope, some force in this rope. The question is, is how do we figure out what's going on here? So basically what we're going to do first is talk about how do we represent this how do we get some idealized form of this? How do we turn this into a systems of equations? Then when we have the system of equations, then we're going to solve it. So we're not going to go straight for the kill here and try to figure out what f1 and f2 is. You may have done that in your physics class. and There's some shortcuts we can use here. But we're more interested in general approaches that are going to always work and things that we can do that will be general solution techniques. So let's look at how we can visualize this and turn this into something different. Okay, so now we've got this object. It's really in three dimensions. We're going to try to simplify this, so we're going to think about this in two dimensions. So if we turn around and look at this thing straight on, we're only going to worry about the two dimensions up and down, left and right. We'll worry about the third dimension later. 
And we're going to idealize this a little further. So conceptually, we're going to think about these things in terms of forces. Now, what's interesting about ropes is you cannot push on a rope. So the uh, force due to the rope is only in tension, and has to be directly along the lines of the, or the direction of the rope. And the gravity is going to be pulling straight down. So we can now think about these things in terms of these vectors. So these vectors are going to be pulling in the directions of the rope. And the uh, gravity is going to be pulling straight down. So now we just focus on these three vectors. And we were given the angles. So we know the force on the left is some angle phi away from the horizontal. And the angle on the right is some angle theta from the horizontal. And we now have our conceptual model of what these forces are doing. And can now break these up using basic geometry.